right. How's it going, Phoenix, Arizona? I've learned that one of my money guns was out of batteries. I guess I got too hype the last time I did this. I'm sorry? It's the heat. Oh, but it's a dry heat. So. <laughs> I did like unironically talk about that today with my buddy uh, who's going to be on stage soon, but hello. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm very excited to be here, excited to be back in Phoenix. Was anyone here the last time I did a live show in Phoenix? All right. Thank you. I was here in January of 2020. Remember when the world was different uh, for my bachelor party, which was very fun. That was before the bachelor party. Then we had the fun bachelor party. I love Phoenix a lot. I was very happy to be able to return and to do something very important, which is try to figure out what the hell is the plot of Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. Now, I cannot do this alone. I need someone to help me make sense of all of this. So I would love to welcome to the stage my buddy from college, Grant Ron. Grant, come on out. Hello. Hello. What up? How's it going? I'm really sorry about the other gun. <laughs> oh, it's OK. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'll get, okay. I can get new batteries. It's all fine. Right. But, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. I haven't seen you in three minutes. Yeah, no, yeah. I was, I was actually over there watching you, so it's been sort of an unbroken stream for me. Uh, now, you are a new voice slash face to the Potterless universe. That's so true. I get to do the rare thing, which is what I would normally do for new guests, which is ask what your history is with Harry Potter. So, what's your history with Harry Potter? Um, my history with Harry Potter? I mean, I think... I was an obsessive book fan for the first 15, 20 years of my life. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I like the movies. I don't like. I don't watch them every year like everybody else does. But um, I would say, I was saying to you backstage. I think I feel like I know more about Harry Potter than the average person. Do I know more about Harry Potter than the average person in this specific room? That is a question I'm not sure about. <laughs> That is okay, because for today, you don't need to know about Harry Potter. You just need to not know about Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. And I sure don't. And you sure don't. I will say, before we get into it, that when I was trying to figure out who I could have join me here on stage for the show, uh, I did search your old tweets to see if you ever tweeted about Harry Potter. So before we get into this, I just would like to address searching for your Twitter and then just searching for the word Potter. Okay. Um, so the, the first one is, uh, <laughs> the first one you said in, uh, this was July 14th, 2011. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Every, and I was super funny then. So. <laughs> Honestly, not all that broken up about missing Harry Potter. The story's been over for a while. Ooh. <laughs> was this like, which, it was which a movie, movie tweet. It was yeah. a movie tweet. Was this between movie seven and eight? It was because I was going to camp during when the seventh movie was coming out, and I uh, wanted everybody to know, like, I don't care, like I'm gonna be at camp, like camp's gonna be really fun. <laughs> now the other tweet I would like to point out is, is my favorite, which is dunking on JK Rowling. I don't know what this was in reference to because it was in a thread before Twitter threads existed, yeah. but you did say old JK knew this, which is why old JK gave us Harry Potter and new JK gave us Casual Vacancy, which is one of the bad, it got, like, It got actually uh, so much Galbraith worse ones. after Casual Vacancy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really continued downhill. Uh, you also then, the final one that I would like to talk here, sorry, is uh, in reference to the Houston Rockets, your favorite basketball team, you said, quote, I will be the one to kill Harry Potter, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> uh, the Rockets and the Lakers are playing in the playoffs. So, so he warned me this was going to do this, and uh, he was going to do this. And um, none of those tweets have any likes. And I, I, I swear I do get likes on Twitter every <laughs> once in a while. Like, I, like and those are just particularly bad. Some of them have two likes. Don't, don't be so too hard So if you've ever gotten yourself. a like on a Harry Potter tweet, like you're actually more qualified to do this job <laughs> than, than I currently am. It's okay. Today is a fun reverse version of Potterless where I am the expert in that I know what's going on in Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. And when I say that, what I actually mean is I played the first couple of years all the way through on the phone and then it just got too much to handle. So shout out to bluemoongame.com who has walkthroughs of everything. So I've read the walkthroughs and prepared notes based off of them, and we're gonna go through year five and year six question mark to see how much we can get done. But let me tell you guys, it's a mess. <laughs> has anyone here by show of hands, has anyone played the Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery game? Okay, cool. And then who, <laughs> the one person said, I tried. <laughs> Is there anyone out there, I'm assuming everyone else has not played it at all? Don't worry, 
we're all on the same page. Because playing it, you still have no idea what's going on. Now, where we're picking up here is partway through year five. What is going on in the plot? So you've, you've played none of the games at all, right? Yeah. Okay. Basically, it takes place in the past. You, okay. It is, you are a student, like, when Harry is born. So, like, Voldemort, like, first tried the baby attack on okay. Harry. So you're, like, Tonks is one of your classmates. Charlie Weasley is one of your classmates. Bill's a couple years older than you. That kind of age range. Okay. So it's but like it's a, still, like, it's a wizard school. Still Hogwarts. Okay. <laughs> it's, but it's the 80s. And that you good. weirdly share a lot of like main character similarities with Harry Potter, even though you are distinctly not Harry Potter. Like your Bogart cool. is Voldemort, even though you have no beef with Voldemort. <laughs> He's a scary guy. He looks like a yeah. snake. Snape still hates you I for some reason. I compared him to Kobe Bryant once, which yeah. is like now so that's a bad comparison. <laughs> so what happens in the game is that you you always have to defeat a cursed vault. There are these vaults that have evil magic that cause some sort of curse throughout the school, and you need to get to the bottom of them and figure out what's going on. So the current curse in year five is that portraits in the school are sucking students into them. That seems really bad. Yeah, it's super <laughs> bad. <laughs> It's are, we, like, are we sure about this? It's, it, is, it is some scary stuff. It's like the worst version of blue skidooing you could ever imagine. <laughs> and that is what we're currently trying to solve here. So where we last left off, really going along with the, you're basically just Harry Potter in this game, Snape is teaching you legitimacy because you are prepping to talk to Madame Rakepick, the most suspicious professor in the world. And you want to talk to her about Jacob, your long-lost missing older brother, who was expelled from Hogwarts for oh, unleashing the cursed vaults. Oh. He, was, he unleashed the first cursed vault, or at least was pegged cool. for doing it. And you're going to try to talk to Madame Rickpick, and then through legitimacy, see if she has any sort of like memories about it, and then see what's going on. So that, that's where we're at. How much older than me is um, me, the character in this game? Yes, of Snape. course. <laughs> how, how much older is Snape than, than I am? I guess Snape would be like he would be in his thirties at this point. Oh, okay. Because right. he's 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 like or he's in his late thirties with Harry, so I guess he's in his late twenties. All right. Snape's like my age, beefing with yeah. a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> it's weird. The older we get, the weirder it is. <laughs> it's super weird. Yeah, terrifying. I cannot. I cannot imagine like. I cannot imagine caring. How do I say this in the nice way? I can't imagine like having so much disdain for a teenager beyond like, oh, they're just a teenager that I would like actively beef with them. Because it would just be like, oh, you're 15. Yes, we were all stupid when we were 15. That's fine. Have your bad opinions. Wear your extremely baggy jeans. Go for it, Gen Z. Have a good time. You'll learn. We all did together. So on top of all of this, you're still trying to find a portrait of cursed vaults so that you can go into that portrait and stop the cursed vaults from cursing the portraits. Uh, all right. Yeah. We're nine minutes into the show. No one knows what's happening. <laughs> Good job, me. Out. Yeah. No, yeah. No idea. <laughs> all right. Don't worry. We're going to make more sense of it. Here's, here we go. So you've had your legitimacy lesson with Snape. And now you are trying to control it. Well, how do you control it? You practice it on your friends. <laughs> That's really bad, right? Super terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just infiltrating the mind of your closest friends. I remember what legitimacy is, right? Yes. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. See in their brain things that they don't want you to see. You practice on your friends. All right. You keep doing this so that you can hopefully be good enough to try it on Madame Rakepick. Then you go to Madame Rakepick, you try to pick her brain, and it doesn't work because she's very good at Aquamancy. Okay. So she shields her mind from your legitimacy attack. Cool. So then you're hanging out with your friends in the courtyard who are somehow still friends with you after you have infiltrated their most personal thoughts. And your best friend, Rowan, gets possessed by a mysterious dark wizard, and then he starts to attack you. I wonder who it is. It is a mysterious dark wizard. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we've run into a mysterious dark wizard. There's sure. this person that we think is, is involved. If they are not the dark wizard, they are known as the letter R, which makes Madame Rakepick, whose last name starts with an R, yeah. 
very suspicious. Yet yeah. you still, she's still employed by the school because it's Hogwarts, and why would they ever fire anybody? I, I'm starting to get hung up on this, but like, yeah. was it non consensual when you did legitimacy on the? I so I think when you do it on your friends, it's like, hey, I need to practice, and they go, okay, sure. But on Madame Rakebick, you try to like sneak it while you talk to her. Okay, all right, uh-huh. yeah. But then right. she was, she knows what you're doing because you're 15 years old and there's no way you're going to be able to sneak that. Sure. You, you, because you are Harry Potter, you are as smooth as Harry Potter, which is to say, not smooth at right. all. Okay. You are chunky peanut butter. <laughs> you are not, you're not smooth at all. So, the mysterious dark wizard possesses Rowan. Rowan attacks you, but Ben, who is your friend that is a terrified of everything, kind of like a Neville stand-in, but even more sure. scared of everything, and I personally don't trust Ben Okay. because no one's that scared of everything. All right. He defends you and the rest of your friends. No one else gets hurt. Everything's okay. So Rowan, though, is recovering in the hospital wing from, you know, being possessed. And you go visit Rowan. You find out that he was under the influence of the Imperius curse, which makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Because yeah, he was possessed. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's fun that in the game you have to determine this, mm. which I feel like is pretty obvious since it's the one curse that possesses people. But anyway. You what? Bl- what? What is the mechanic of this game? Like, how am I possessing people? <laughs> You're not doing any of the possessing. Your friend just gets possessed by someone evil. Okay, um, great. It's very much a just like a tap to do stuff game. Okay. There are tap some to like read minds. Tap to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's 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 like an RPG, except none of your choices actually matter. So, <laughs> so okay. it's a very We've railroaded. All that. You know what? I you know what? I was gonna say something, but those games are great. <laughs> it's a railroaded RPG. So you're in the hospital wing, you figure this out, and afterwards, you meet with Madame Rakepick in Nocturne Alley, where she demonstrates using the Cruciatus Curse on people in Nocturne Alley. I don't think she should be doing that. No, probably not. (laughs) You talk to the sketchiest person in the sketchiest part of town, and she does the sketchiest spell. It's just a bad situation for you, a 15-year-old human being, to be in. So... You are, as the character, very shocked, and you say no when Rigpick wants to teach you to do it, which is good. Like, your head's in the right spot. She goes, do you want to learn this thing you're not supposed to do? And you go, no, thank you, which is great. Yeah. So whatever, like, wizard version of dare is, like, I guess, like, the, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like say no to drugs. It's say no to people wanting you to use the Cruciatus curse on people. Yeah, I... I so, okay, so I'm picking up that it's still... <laughs> It's like one, the names are worse than the books. Hundred mm-hmm. percent names are worse all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but we're still just like putting kids in danger just at all turns. I mean, it is Hogwarts. Yeah, so that's like part of the brand. Yeah, it's still true to form. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the next day, you're trying to find Madame Rakepick, I guess, to like try to legitimacy her again. You then encounter, and it's funny at this point because it's in the past, Percy Weasley's pet rat, oh. Scabbers. I know who that is. And much to you as the character's surprise, but not you as the player's surprise, Scabbers turns out to be an animagus named Peter Pettigrew. Wow. Whoa! Now, you might be thinking, wait a second, if you determined this, how did no one know that Scabbers was Peter Pettigrew later? Well, after you realize this and you talk with Peter Pettigrew, he uses a memory charm on you so that you forget everything that just happened. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just the game got a retcon like i like that the game immediately like they introduce this ridiculous thing that would break all of the plot and then they just immediately retcon it five seconds later <laughs> yeah i just feel like like is this a cameo for peter pettigrew like who was like oh i need to play this game so i can see the new peter pettigrew like it just like <laughs> new pettigrew just dropped he's my favorite character <laughs> I don't know, maybe, because uh, since I wasn't playing the game, I don't know if they're hyping stuff up, like, uh, they're trying to tease stuff, like, next time on Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, Peter Pettigrew's back, and yeah. then also, he will be gone in yeah. five seconds. <laughs> I, I gotta say, like, I, I know we're making fun of it, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm going to download this later. You should have told me about this way before. (laughs) Well, now you can play it, and then we'll do another show together, and then you can be the expert, and then I'll be the confused one. So, Madame Rigpick hears your conversation with Peter Pettigrew, and she deduces that Peeves has the vault portrait 
Now, I have not played the game. I'm assuming your conversation is about vaults. Otherwise, this would make no sense at all. It'd be wild for you to be like, oh, hey, fun fact. I'm a rat that's actually a person. And then Madam <laughs> Rick Pick goes, I bet Peeves has the cursed <laughs> vault portrait. So I would assume you ask him if he knows what's going on. Mm. But who's to say? Okay. <laughs> so let's see. So now you have to find Peeves. So you visit all of the common rooms to talk to each of the house ghosts to see if they know where Peeves is. Classic. They don't, you also then talk to Professor Binns, the other ghost person that we know at the school, to see if he has any sort of advice about Peeves and poltergeists in general. You then visit the prefect's bathroom to talk to Duncan Ash and ask him for help. I don't know why, but of all the people, he becomes the most helpful. He agrees to help set up a meeting with Peeves. I don't know why Duncan Ash is there. I don't know why you met him in the bathroom, but he helps you get to Peeves the Poltergeist. It's, it's a good name, which we need more of. So Duncan we're, Ash. We're putting, yeah, we're bringing the good names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, we need more of that. That makes sense. Yeah. So then you have to win over the favor of Peeves before he will talk to you because he's like a god king now. So you have to prank a bunch of people in the school to win favor of Peeves. You do a bunch of pranks, it does not impress him enough. Oh, no. So you need to do grand mischief in order to satisfy Peeves so that he will give you the portrait. Oh no. Yeah. Now the, the grand mischief that you do is you and your friend Bidea invent a spell Okay. For the perfect mischief. That's really hard, right? It's very challenging. Okay. Okay. I think only Snape did that. Right, like, great. of people that we met, it's Snape. And I think that's it. Probably Dumbledore at some point in time. But you invent a spell that is perfect for mischief. If you were going to make a, mischief, a mischievous spell, what would you go for? Like, word-wise? Or, or just, just, like, what like, does it if do? If you were going to make some sort of mischievous spell. Like, if you were going to do the cool prank. Like... I don't, um, I, I'm so bad at this. Okay. I would be like, you should I, just I would, like... Yeah, thank you. Maybe you could do... If you want to go, like, big prank, you could do some sort of, like, give everybody wedgies. Okay. That, like, you could go that route. I don't know if Hogwarts has water fountains, but you could, like, change all the water to be sparkling water, which is just objectively worse than still water. So the best prank I pulled in college was... Okay, um, great. A guy left... Uh, we were living in a suite, and so, so it's, like, six of us, and there's a common room, mm -hmm. and he left town for the weekend and he left his door like unlocked mm -hmm. and so what we did was just move him out <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny about that is all of the like we just moved a person like that was what was hard and that was what was funny and if so if, the, if there was a spell like that would be ruined like that's good I'm... I think I think like I think introducing spells into mischief you know I'm just against it it's that's my new, my new position there, there you go. go well the you might enjoy this though because I don't know what this spell does but it doesn't sound mischievous you invent a spell called the star shower spell that's, that's... has anyone played this far in the game okay cool no, well, oh, sorry, what did you say? No, just a big, big emphatic no. Definitely Good, no. Okay, a lot of head shaking and then, and then one people emphatic. people who like, didn't play it, but it's not a big thing. I don't know how this is a prank. Like, you make a bunch of shooting stars appear in the sky? That sounds very cool, but not mischievous. I don't know. But you perform this, at least according to the review, the person who wrote this recap, the mischievous masterpiece oh. that leaves Peeves impressed, and he hands you the portrait of the vault. So there you go, hooray. You take this vault portrait, you give it to Madame Rakepick. For some reason, <laughs> she's clearly the most suspicious person here. You're like, here, Madame Rakepick, the evil thing. So you give it to her, and then somehow, with this conversation with her, you deduce that a dragon is most likely guarding the next cursed vault. There's always something okay. that guards the cursed vault, yeah. but it's usually thematic. In year two, the curse was that ice, evil ice was like freezing things and people throughout the school. So you figure, okay, it's probably some sort of snow creature. Sure. And then it was these ice knights, like these knights made out of ice. And I don't understand why, if it's portrait related, why is it not like evil Picasso? Why is... <laughs> Why is a dragon the obvious guardian? I feel like Rembrandt would be a good boss fight. <laughs> what would? Rembrandt. Oh, Rembrandt. Yes, yeah. yes, I yes, just, yes. Like he's, he just pays attention to detail, and so I feel mm -hmm. like it would be... <laughs> I think it would be hard to get him, you know? <laughs>
oh, this is why we have you. Art, art, <laughs> per, art person wears me. I was an engineer. And I was like, oh, yeah, Rembrandt. Toothpaste? No, got it. Never mind. The artist. <laughs> I think the Rembrandt's got a museum in Amsterdam, right? I think I like power walked through that one. We're getting out of both of our desks. <laughs> and, I, and I feel like, at least with Harry Potter, like, like you, you know. we kind of know a little right, bit. Right, right, right. So you give this over to Rick Pick, you figure out it's probably a dragon. So because of that, you need to learn about dragons. So who do you talk to? Bill Weasley. What? There's one dragon Weasley, <laughs> and you don't talk to Charlie? You talk to Bill, like close, but no, like you're, you almost had it. You talk to Bill and Marula, who is like, Marula is your version of Draco, but oh. as the years have gone on, she has become more and more of your friend, okay. which is like the redemption arc that Draco never had kind of sure. thing. So you talk to Bill and Marula of all people to learn about dragons. Cool. I don't understand. Are we... Like, I assume there's a little bit of a spark there. Or yes. Like, all right, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a couple different people that you can romance in the game, and yeah. Marula is one of them. Sick. And it's very, like, hey, Arnold, Helga Pataki kind of, yeah. we, we hate each other, but we love each other secretly yeah. vibe. It, like, it was going on with Harry and Draco. We just didn't say <laughs> yeah, but Draco was dating the apple. So, you choose one of your friends to accompany you, and... I would hope, I haven't played the game, but there's different points in the RPG where you can bring a friend along. Okay. I would hope the reason you don't talk to Charlie is that Charlie is one of the options to bring along. Mm. So I'm going to give the game the benefit of the doubt, but if Charlie's Which not an do. option, awful. Cool. Yeah. yeah no, I, I think we should definitely give it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> so you learn that the vault portrait is also a port key that is set to activate, which will be the way to get into the cursed vault. So you grab the portrait and that will teleport you into the cursed vault. So I guess it's not inside of the portrait, it's somewhere else. I don't know, it's the game. You gotta just yes and and roll with it here. So you get into the portrait vault together with your friends and it is in fact guarded by a dragon. It's it, 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 by, guarded by a dragon, it is guarded by a Hungarian horn tail, but thanks to your training and the help of your friends, you're able to defeat it and break the portrait curse. I remember this happening and I did play this part because Kelly, my wonderful wife, was still playing at this point and she is still playing the game, but she only does the side missions now, not the main plot because the side missions are time sensitive and then she goes, oh, well, I should do this one first. And then there's always another side mission because that's how the game works. It's one of those games that really wants you to pay to advance. I see. Yeah, yeah. so she falls for that, but doesn't give the money. She just gets angry at the game. I did have to help her with the dragon fight because the dragon fight is really hard and we had to look up strategies of how to do it. And I was able to figure out some stuff because I get very into video games, so I very much looked into how to defeat the dragon, and I was able to, like, deduce. Because when you duel, it's just like fancy rock, paper, scissors. Oh, okay. You can choose three types. you're dueling with a dragon? Yeah, you're dueling the dragon, okay, cool. as you do. And what's funny is, like, you do, like, oh, ridiculous, or you do, oh, impedimenta, or whatever, and then the yeah. dragon bites you. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> you, have brought, you have brought a wand to a tooth fight. Like, it's sure, very... Sure. It's very different. But you basically just play fancy rock, paper, scissors where you, you can either do an aggress like an aggressive spell, a defensive spell, or a tricky spell. And I figured out that you just want to do like lots of defensive spells, whatever. I made it work. Cool. We, I helped Kelly defeat the dragon. But then hey, that's the, the hey, last Mike, I've played of this game. I'm like really proud of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> you're so, uh, I, like, so big. That, you know, it was, it yeah. was a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah. It's funny. I started that just trying to, like, give context, and then halfway through, I was like, am I bragging about... You so, were. I'm glad you, you called were. me out. Yeah, Thank 100%. you. I'm, I'm so glad you called and me out. And it was, like, I think it was worthy. Like, <laughs> it's something worth Yeah, I'm going to go home, about. like, dear diary. <laughs> so... Unfortunately, this victory is short-lived because moments after defeating the dragon, Madame Rake Pick betrays you. What? No way! She betrays you and the rest of your friends, and you learn that she has been working with R all along. Now, maybe she still is R, but she, you at least learn she's evil, which was the most obvious thing ever. To make it even worse, though, she then starts using the Cruciatus Curse on Marula and says that she's going to kill her. Wow. I don't understand why. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's bad. Yes. I'll tell you what. Yes. Let it be known. Killing is bad. Not good. Grant Ron. Torturing children. 
I, it's yeah. a little, it's like, it's like better than killing them, but like, we don't have to get this. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, you have quick thinking and you use the garroting gas, garroting gas mm -hmm. that Professor Snape gave you, and you force Madame Rakepick to retreat. Cool. Okay. So you explore. This seems really helpful. Yeah. The gas. Yeah. We good. should have had that around. Yeah, maybe it's just like really stinky. I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. So you explore the rest of the vault and you find your long lost brother, Jacob. He's trapped in one of the portraits oh inside God. the cursed vault. Oh so God. you are able to set your long lost brother, Jacob, free. You've been looking for him for five years. But he immediately leaves to go chase after Madame Rakepick. So you don't get to talk with Jacob. You discover, though, the clues to the final vault, and you escape with the rest of your friends using another port key. So now you have to go back to Hogwarts to see if the portrait-related curse where people are getting sucked into portraits is broken. Mm -hmm. So you and the rest of your friends return to Hogwarts, and you tell everything to Dumbledore, and you learn that the portrait curse did, in fact, get broken. All of the, all of the students who were trapped inside of portraits are now spit out of them and they're all fine and one of the people who was trapped was penny's sister beatrice penny is one of your good friends cool. and her sister beatrice is now free but marula is still recovering from the effects of you know getting cruciatus cursed by a professor at hogwarts yeah so she is in the hospital wing you go you talk with her it seems like she's going to recover everything's going to be okay is there any concern from the faculty about like the student that's been missing for five years and it turns out to have been like fallen into a painting that was in the school, so it's sort of the school's <laughs> fault. I think your brother went missing. I think your brother got expelled and then went missing. Oh, so, so Dumbledore is like, whatever, man. Not our problem. Yeah, <laughs> we're, exactly. We're, we're good. <laughs> it's out of my hair. You got lost on your own terms, not mine. <laughs> so you help your friend Ben find Madame Rigpick's Niffler, Sickleworth, Pretty good name for a Niffler. You learn that Ben, who's afraid of everything, is going to try to have a change of heart. He wants to not be afraid of everything anymore. He's going to be a big old brave boy. Also, hey, don't we all? Yeah, I'm all trying to get there. I'd love not to be afraid of everything. <laughs> also, Charlie tells you that the time has come to finally say goodbye to Bill Weasley because it's his seventh year and he's going to be graduating. So you already know that he's going to graduate and become a curse breaker at Gringotts Bank. And what Charlie wants you to do is keep Bill busy while he organizes a goodbye party for him and all of his friends at the Three Broomsticks. I already love Charlie a lot. We love him more. He seems perfect. Throwing a big surprise going away party for your brother? Yeah. yeah. I'm sold on the game. 100%. <laughs> like, this sounds cool. Great. I'm excited to see if you get super into it. <laughs> so you keep Charlie busy. And then you show up at the Three Broomsticks with Bill. You give him a proper farewell party. Unfortunately, during the party, Mad-Eye Moody shows up because got to get that character service in there. Mad-Eye Moody shows up. He apparates you away from the party. But oh. you as the main character don't see what's going on. The perspective of the game stays at the Three Broomsticks. Oh. And then you come back hours later and then your friends ask you, where did you go? And then you say, I've been sworn to secrecy by Mad-Eye Moody to oh. not tell you where I was. So it's a rare instance where you, as the main character in your own RPG game, sure. don't know what you just did. Right. <laughs> I, I invite you to see this as sort of like an avant-garde break from form, like Ooh. sort of like a risk-taking. I don't have any more synonyms for that. Yeah, <laughs> you, did, you hit a lot. It was impressive. It's three. I don't, I don't think it was a lot. It's rule of threes. That's okay. all you got to do. Cool, cool. So you don't know what's going on. You don't know where he went. You don't know where you went. But it is the end of year five, so it is the end of year five feast, and it's the end of year five in the game, so now you go into year six. Okay. So summer happens, you don't see anything that happens in the summer, but it is the start of term feast. You reunite with a bunch of your friends, you discuss what happened last year, you know, like yeah. you did in the books to recap people yeah. that don't remember what happened in between books. Yeah. But, always, always the most boring part of the books. Yes. I'm sorry if that's a hot take. I, I hope it's I'm not, because sure. I clowned on it often in yeah. the episodes of Potterless, because J.K. Rowling just made it so boring, and some people would try to defend it, say, oh, come on, you have to do it. Sometimes uh -huh. there's multiple years in between books. But hey, I've been reading the Percy Jackson books. Rick Riordan is really good at not making the recaps boring. All right. Good. Good crowd here. The thing is, like, can we just, can we just pick up 
when he goes to the borough, like, can we just pick up? Yeah. We don't, I, like, I get it, they're bad. The Dursleys, yeah. they're bad. Uh-huh. And I feel, I feel like, sorry for all of them, but I also hate all of them. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's yeah. a mess. Right. And then, but are you up. sure you don't need to read four chapters per book about why they're, why I'm they're bad? I'm relatively certain, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, Rick in the Percy Jackson books does a really good job of just interspersing it throughout the first couple of chapters, but not just doing what J.K. Rowling does, which is just like six consecutive paragraphs recapping the previous book. Like, all right, J.K., we get it. Ugh. Anyway, it's still in the game, true to form. But not all of your friends are at the feast. Ben, Marula, and Beatrice are all absent. You eventually find Ben and Marula. You learn that both of them changed after what happened in the portrait vault. Oh. So, I don't know, I guess they went through a traumatic event and became different people? I mean, it happens. Either that or maybe they went through puberty in between years five and six? I don't know. Like... It's quick. <laughs> Three months. Well, I mean, hey, in the summer, a lot can change. I yeah. went through a big growth spurt in between True. the summer of sophomore and junior of high school. It can happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> So, they are changed people, but you still don't see Beatrice. And you talk to Penny, your friend, her sister, and she warns that something bad has happened to her. And then, dun, 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 you figure out what's going on. So, let me scroll to the right part so I can figure out what's going on. Okay, while while you're doing that, Uh I thought of a a callback joke, and I'm going to forget it if I Please do, let it it happen. So, the second best prank that my friends and I pulled Okay, good, 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 good. (laughs) Can you guys finish this joke? It's, um, I invented this spell that makes stars fall. <laughs> no way, I that's so mischievous. Think, like, it did hurt me a little bit for you to make fun of me in the app, because, like, one, they stole my story. Like, I, I that's me. Man, you got to take them to IP court, baby. Yeah, I, and I will. <laughs> get, the, get a writing cred on the game, you know? <laughs> They'll put you in the credits. Point. People know who wrote this. <laughs> So Penny tells you that Beatrice doesn't want to talk to Penny or to anyone, so you offer to help. You find out that Beatrice and Ismelda, who is basically one of the Crab and Goyle stand-ins, she's one of Marula's friends, but Ismelda is wild. Ismelda, like, really wants to learn what the unforgivable curses are and how to utilize them. That's, that sucks, yeah. Yeah, she's like aspirational Death Eater. Like, really, really strange human. So you talk to Beatrice, and she makes it really clear, I do not want to talk to Penny. Later on, you discover, because this happens every year in this game, there's another curse that has struck Hogwarts, and it's from the final cursed vault. This time, it is a curse that petrifies students, and the only way to break it is to find the cursed vault. Now, this did happen in the second Harry Potter book. I was was thinking that, yeah. So it feels like the people making this game came up with five curses, and then they were like, (laughs) oh, a sixth thing? Huh, like, I don't know how you don't come up with anything else. It is a giant magical world where you can just invent anything and then justify it by being, it's magic. Sure. But instead they're like, ah, let's just rip off the thing from the second book but not have the whole snake of it all. The snake's the best part. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. The petrification is not cool. The when basilisk I found out that shit was a snake, oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> so that's what's happening in year six. You have your first divination class of the year, and Professor Trelawney gives you a very ominous prophecy, so you have to figure out its meaning. So what do you do? You talk to your centaur friend Torvis to see if he can crack the code. Is this this the same centaur? Sorry. This is not Forenzi. It is a new character that we've met in the past named Torvis. You had a bit of a rocky start in your friendship, but then you were able to bond, and now he's your centaur friend. I thought it wasn't the centaur from the books, because Torvis is not a good name. Yeah, Torvis. (laughs) But I wasn't sure. It's a good instinct. So, you tried to talk to Torvis about this, but you find out that it is beyond his abilities to decipher. So, he tells you, that's okay, there's some other centaurs that might know what's going on. So he says that in order for you to be allowed inside the centaur camp, you need to present suitable offerings to them. So you gather gifts for the centaur tribe. I do not know what the gifts are. I did not look them up. I'm very intrigued to know. Is it just like a bunch of sugar cubes and apples? (laughs) Could it be? (laughs) Is it a bunch of oats and hay? I, I feel like maybe it's shirts. I mean, yeah. (laughs) You never, you never see those guys wearing shirts and like, it's like, it makes me more comfortable wearing a shirt than not wearing one, and I'm half of what they are. <laughs> so, you present your offerings, and you are judged by Forenzi, the centaur that we knew from before. Okay, cool. 
thankfully, he finds your gifts acceptable, and you are allowed to visit the centaur camp as an honored guest. Now, he promises to study this prophecy because he can't figure it out quite yet, but hopefully he can be able to decipher it soon. And if you're thinking, that sounds like a bunch of bullshit so that the game makes you want to extend things and try to pay money so it goes quicker, that's because it is. I don't understand, like, you look at a prophecy and you go, I don't know what this is, but let me do centaur research and I'll get back to you? Like, I don't know what he's doing in this time to figure it out. They've got, like, a big library and that books are all half book, half... Well, I haven't thought of the other thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Comic book? Yeah, that's bad. Half book, half graphic novel, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's Words nothing. on one page, uh, okay, pictures sure, on the other. Sure, yeah, 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 there you go. Okay. We've done it. Good yeah. joke. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good, good jokes. I did good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to sort out the situation with Penny and Beatrice while the centaurs are figuring out what's going on, but you don't have any success. You also learn that Ben is trying to find out clues about Madame Rakebick by interrogating various dark wizards in Nocturne Alley. So he's really taking this bravery thing very yeah, seriously. Just, just flip the switch, this guy. Mm-hmm, yes. I, I, again, it's aspirational. Yeah, he's, he's going into, the, what is, I think something he's is, gonna... is something ominously beeping? I'm terrified. Uh, it is Ben. <laughs> All right, the beeping stop. That's cool. I think Ben is going to get got. I'm, I, I, I don't feel great about it. I don't either. I For a long time, I thought Ben was a villain, and then you find out that like he was, but he was under the Imperius curse, but uh -huh. maybe he was lying about it. Oh. I don't know. Either Ben's going to die or be evil. Not looking good for Ben. Can anybody fact check you if you're like, oh, I'm under the Imperius curse? Because that seems like a big loophole. For right? You could just li like you could do something really mean and be like, guys, it wasn't me. Ever. Like You just can take the shaggy, it wasn't me approach right. to anything in the wizarding world. <laughs> right. And unless they hit you with Veritas Serum, it's not going to work. Oh, okay. There's Veritas Serum. Yeah, yeah. but like you All have right. to get it. Like They yeah. don't use it a lot, so it must be hard to get. So as long as you keep your Imperius Curse to small things, then yeah. you can... Yeah. Then you can, you can sail like, way under the radar. So Charlie tells you that Bill is coming to Hogwarts soon, so you can finally get the chance to reconnect with him and see how he's been doing in the past couple of months. You find out that he is planning to teach you and your friends some defensive spells that might come in handy in case R attacks. Mm -hmm. Percy informs you that the twins, friend George, have gone missing... So you go with either Percy or Charlie. You get to choose a pretty easy choice, if you ask me. And you go look for Fred and George. Eventually, you find them inside of the Red Cap's hole. The Red Cap is... I, I, last time I did a live show about this, I had to ask what a Red Cap was. And it's some sort of like evil gnome type creature okay. that is like mentioned in the book, but not super in-depth. Sure. But he's got a hole in the Forbidden Forest where he like captures people. So okay. he has captured Fred and George. That's, that sounds really bad. Yes. The reason that they got trapped here is because they were following your missing and then found, but then missing again, older brother Jacob. Classic. He was going into the Forbidden Forest. Fred and George chased after him. And then you are able to finally reunite with Jacob. So okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. Quick. Yes. How do we feel about Jacob? Like, how do you feel about Jacob? Communication is very important in relationships. I, can't, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And I feel like if Jacob would just tell you what's going on or at least be like, hey, I got to go, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk to you in a little bit and then leave. I feel like Jacob could do a little bit better yeah. because he has been missing for most of your life. Yeah. And also, like, seems like he would want a nap. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't trust mm -hmm. somebody who's not like, can I, can I like, get some food or like, right. a, yeah. a burger or, yeah. you know, like, whatever. A butterbeer or something. A butter beer. Yeah. yeah. So Jacob tells you that a mysterious assassin is after you and Marula, and the, mis and the mysterious assassin wants to duel you, or sorry, just kidding, and Jacob wants to duel you to oh, make no. sure that in case the assassin attacks, you're ready to defend yourself. It just seems like we should talk about other stuff. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So your reunion, though, is very short-lived because right after the duel, he leaves. I, <laughs> we've already said what needs to be said. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I, wanna like, I want to like your brother here, but he is incredibly sketchy and dodgy and just a big old flake, and I don't like flakes. Not a fan. Yeah. So Penny introduces you to an immensely popular first-year Hufflepuff student named Cedric Diggory. That's right, baby. <laughs> See, this is the fan service of why these people are in the games. When we said Peter Pettigrew, no one clapped. 
Why'd they put him in? What was yeah. the point? <laughs> so you meet Cedric Diggory. I don't think there's any plot implications. You just meet Cedric Diggory. <laughs> But yeah. then you notice Sickleworth, Madam Rake picks pet Niffler carrying a white quill. So you realize if I follow this Niffler, I might find Madam Rake pick. So you decide to chase after it. Now you follow the Niffler and it ends up in Jacob's room. So Jacob had this like missing hidden room in Hogwarts, which does completely check out given that there was a secret evil racist basement in Hogwarts it's and true. they didn't find it. That's true. So I feel like some sort of room where Jacob basically had the Charlie Day from uh, It's yeah, Always Sunny yeah. stuff going on to try to figure out what's going on. Them not finding that room completely checks out. How does Jacob know that there's a mysterious wizard who wants to duel me? He's not good at communication. We don't know. <laughs> 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 so you find the Niffler in Jacob's room and also Jacob is there. So you talk with Jacob and of course you only talk about the quill. You don't talk about, hello brother that's been missing most of my life. Yeah. How are you? What's been going on? Instead, you just talk about the immediate task at hand. Yeah. Not ideal. Man, you know? Yeah, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We can, we can move on. <laughs> so they be not communicating. <laughs> that's what they do. So you find out that the white quill is in fact a message for you from R. I'm starting to think that Jacob might be evil, and yeah, I don't like yeah. it. I don't like this because how does Jacob know so much about it? I, it's uncomfortable. But it's a message for you from R. Apparently, they want to. They really want to kill you and one of your friends. Okay. You also learn that this white quill likely belonged to one of the owls. So you decide to locate it and see if you can learn more. I don't know if belong is just the wrong word to use here. or if it, <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but you have to go find an owl. Uh -huh. So you go into the owlry. You talk with your friend Talbot, who's this kind of weird dude. Okay. Uh, bad name as well, Talbot. I was kind of in on Talbot, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I nice For looks, me, but, okay, I don't know if this is a Northeast thing. Is the clothing brand Talbot and Talbot's kids big or no? Okay. It was a clothing brand that like I knew in the Northeast and like when I had to get like my first blazer for like my first communion and stuff, I got it from Talbot's kids. And that's the only time I've ever seen the word or the name Talbot before. Okay. I'm, yeah. Yeah. We can, we, we can agree to disagree on this the, one. The thing about Talbot that I will say is if you look up a, a photo of him, there are some people who say they think Talbot looks like me, and I think Talbot is really weird looking in the game, so when people <laughs> tell me I look like him, I get really sad. <laughs> Not like genuinely, but like, really? Like, I don't think I look like this guy. He does like kind of have like a long face and big hair, but like that's where it stops. That's a fair way down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, you meet up with Talbot in the Owlry, and you, Talbot like really likes animals and stuff, so that's, I guess, why he's hanging out in the Owlry. You manage to locate the owl in the Forbidden Forest. And sadly, you go to chase after it, and it flies away because it's an owl, <laughs> so you have to search elsewhere. Eventually, the search leads you to the Hog's Head Inn. Cool. You know, I where like owls go to turn <laughs> up. And you learn that the owl long the owl belongs to Patricia Rakepick. Okay. So maybe the quill belongs to her and not the owl. I have no idea. But you learn that Rakepick recently left to go towards Nocturne Alley, I guess to just Cruciatus curse more innocent people <laughs> for no good reason. So you decide to follow after her. You learn that Madame Rakepick is after the dark artifacts that she left in her classroom before she disappeared. And after asking around, you learn that Professor Dumbledore gave those artifacts to the Ministry of Magic. Good job, Dumbledore. Yeah, that's, that seems like a, there was a protocol, uh -huh. and he read it, and he yes. followed it. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised with right. how normal this was. Completely unprecedented <laughs> Just, behavior from Dumbledore. Yeah, Dumbledore does an exceedingly normal thing. What? <laughs> So then what you decide to do, naturally, is that you are going to break into the Ministry of Magic to get these before Madame Rakepick can do it. And that is the perfect place to break for intermission. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful uh, applause. I've recapped a recap of an iPhone game. Yeah. 
I'm going to pass things off to my good friend, Editing Mike. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So we're going to take a brief intermission here, uh, like 15 minutes or so. During that time, you can, you know, powder your nose, use the restroom, get some more refreshments, whatever. There's also merch in the back. I don't know if anyone saw it. Yeah, shout out to merch. So there's a merch table in the back. You can pay with cash or the Venmo. Uh, I will say that it is the last of the Potterless merch. So like all the stuff that was on the merch store, when they closed the merch store, because the podcast isn't live technically anymore, they just sent me a big old box of it. So I load it up <laughs> onto tour and sell it. What's left is like some funky sizes. Like it's the extreme end of the size spectrum. So you got a bunch of extra small stuff and a bunch of triple XL stuff. Maybe you want a big oversized hoodie. I heard Gen Z likes that. Maybe you want a really tight fit thing. Maybe these are just your sizes. Maybe you want a pillowcase. I don't know. We also have like pins and stickers and stuff that, and signed posters. Those are all one size if it's all, don't worry. Uh, but if you want to get the pottery little stuff before it doesn't exist anymore and I won't be making any more, now's your chance, baby. So you can go get merch and stuff in the back. Uh, the other thing you can do during intermission, we're going to do a Q&A at the end of the show. Just, you can ask us about Harry Potter, anything else, anything in between, shenanigans we got into in college, like moving people out of dorm rooms. Uh, you can send any sort of- And my great Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> any sort of question that you want for the Q&A, just email it to potterlesspodcast at gmail.com. Make the subject line something about uh, Phoenix. Is there like a city that Phoenix doesn't like? Do you have like a rival city that you want to dunk on? Tucson? Is anyone, wait, but is anyone here, did anyone here travel from Tucson? Okay. They, we're not, we're not going to make fun of Tucson. Let's all instead make fun of the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. <laughs> because I wanted the Suns to win the title so badly this year. <laughs> I was very upset when they got eliminated. I may or may not have bet money on the Suns to win the NBA Finals. So I was very disappointed. Don't worry, it was with free bets. When New York City <laughs> introduced free gambling, or introduced gambling apps, a lot of places let you bid, like, here's 300 free dollars in bets. So I bet a lot on the Suns. Uh, so not gonna win that money anymore, but that's okay. But also I feel like Chris Paul deserved the win. I'm very sad. So if you wanna make the subject either something pro Phoenix or anti Dallas, you can do that. So I know that it's a live show question and we'll be back in about 15 minutes or so after a brief intermission. See you all soon. <laughs> No. I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna make this right. Hey, were, were we all looking at tubes and we didn't notice me trip on the way up? Is that <laughs> that's what happened? Okay, that's that's so great to hear. <laughs> oh, thank you. I like it too. Oh, okay, here it is. <laughs> oh God! All right, everyone have a fun intermission. <laughs> All right, let's figure out what the hell's going on in this iPhone game. So, oh uh, man, we're gonna break into the Ministry of Magic, aren't we? It looks great, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. For anyone listening on the podcast after the fact, I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna break into the Ministry of Magic, you know, like you do when you're 16 years old. So, your friend Tulip advises you to seek the aid of a former Ravenclaw prefect who is now working for the ministry, named Chester Davies. You know, we're going we're gonna to back up and talk about Tulip, right? Like, oh, Tulip, Cur <laughs> Tulip Curacao, your friend who loves pranks and Curacao's? stuff? Curacao's? Tulip's last Tul name? Tulip Curacao. Okay. Mm -hmm. Curacao is... Not like the blue liquor thing. Okay, not, that's, uh, that's yeah. why I know it. Not so, the liquor that just exists to make, what if you had a cocktail, but it was blue? <laughs> It's a great question. <laughs> I just, I like, I just feel like we can't not acknowledge Tulip. But do I have anything in particular to say? Like, you know, you could have picked a better flower. We can move on. <laughs> Tulips. Okay, I'm glad you brought this up. Tulips are interesting. I have a, I have a love hate relationship with tulips. I didn't mean the. Fl I, I guess I should clarify. Yeah, I, I yeah. like the flower itself. Uh -huh. I just think that, like, if you're gonna name a British witch, uh -huh. tulip is not great. I don't think. Why is that? Um, Am I missing a British flower reference? Is there a no? I just okay. feel like there are other there are other cooler sounding flowers. Like that's, that's such a, as oh, no, you're not gonna make me name flowers. If you're gonna trash like it. <laughs> so you're you're in on tulip. You like tulip. So, so I like tulip, the character in the game. She's fun. Okay. Uh, she like does. I, I pressed a button. I shouldn't have pressed. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. What I meant the tulips, the flower though, 
in New York City, where I live, they do a fun thing in the planters and stuff near our neighborhood where in the spring, so like in April and May, they put a bunch of tulips in the planters. Yeah. So then you get to see that they've been planted and then like they slowly are really big. And then it's exciting because they're only around for like a couple days before all the leaves, they're all the petals fall off, which is cool. But also like, yeah, tulips don't really last very long. So it's like, yeah. it's like they're very cool and very pretty, but also they don't last a lot. Like, are they a good flower? Are they a bad flower? I don't know. I feel like we've done enough tulip. What do you think? I don't know. I just like tulips. I don't know. Uh, we could go the other way. What's your <laughs> go favorite all color? All in and tulip? only talk about tulips for the next 40 minutes. I'm sort of a purple, I guess we call them violet when they're flowers. Mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. would be my favorite color of tulip. Mm -hmm. I like for tulips, they are the, they have these ones where it's like an orange, yellow, kind of like ombre situation. They going do, on. Yeah. 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 They're really nice. They're very nice. Anyway, if you want to see me posting pictures of tulips, follow me on Instagram <laughs> in April and May because <laughs> I go on Tulip Watch. I go through strolls in the park near our place where oh. they have a lot of tulips. It's very pretty and it's very nice. That sounds romantic. Yeah, I do with Kelly or myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> Tulip advises you to talk to Chester Davies to see if he can help you. So you meet with Chester, you explain the situation to him. You know, how you want to steal things from the Ministry of Magic? Yeah. And he says, it reminds me of my third best prank from college. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done with that yeah, one. Yeah. It's retired. Cha-ching, <laughs> rule of threes. So, that was the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> he says he can't directly help you, but he says it is possible to sneak into the Ministry of Magic using an invisibility cloak. You know, how you just get one of those? Right. So you talk to your friend Jay, and Jay spelled J-A-E. He's Jay Kim. Okay. He's your Korean friend. Cool. So you learn that one of his business acquaintances, so Jay's a drug dealer, um, <laughs> One of his business acquaintances, Jay is a student at Hogwarts who has okay. business acquaintances. Sure. Fred and George started a That's You know what? That's true. Shop. That's very true. Yeah, he's president. So he says that one of his business acquaintances could probably sell you an invisibility cloak. All right. Okay. Yeah, great. But this person won't sell it to you unless you give them a love potion. But luckily, according to your friend Andre, your friend Penny should be able to brew a love potion. Okay, sick. So, yeah. Oh, so it's all, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. You talk to Penny. She says she's going to brew the love potion. You learn that the business associate's name is Alistair. And now that's a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure about Alistair. Alistair, Alistair. I know people have pronounced it both ways. Apologies to all the Alistairs listening. So you go on. You gather all the necessary ingredients and then... Penny successfully brews it, so you have to meet up with Alistair to trade the potion for an invisibility cloak, and you are able to get it. So what do you do after you acquire an invisibility cloak? I'm just worried that this love potion's just out there floating in the wind, right? Like yeah, that's... I mean, love potions in Harry Potter messed up. Super I not I feel like cool. we're on the same page about that, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, consent, great. Love potions, not great. So, you end up doing the trade. You get the invisibility cloak. What else do you do? You practice it on your professors in school to make sure that if you uh, sneak into the Ministry of Magic, you're ready to go. Functionally, also a thing that happened in the books. Yeah, I think it's fine. So the cloak works just as intentioned, and you are able to eavesdrop on some of your professors without them noticing you. Okay. I don't know what the details of the conversations are, but I am intrigued. Yeah, they're all, they're all mad at each other. And... <laughs> They, they have scheduled the wrong kids, and I don't know. <laughs> I, I thought I could make teacher jokes, and I really can't. <laughs> I Should don't know. Should we call Carter really quick? Just, like, throw some teacher oh, jokes? Oh, yeah, our good friend Carter. Who won Teacher of the Year? Hooray, He's, he uh, did teacher it. Teacher of the Year, guy we know. Mm -hmm. Also would have been more qualified to host this <laughs> <laughs> So, later on, you're in the Hogshead Inn, and Mad-Eye Moody appears to warn you of upcoming danger. He asks you to meet him at the training grounds where he's going to explain everything. So he warns you that R has former Death Eaters in its ranks. Hey, so, did we ever... We disappeared for three hours with Mad-Eye Moody, right? Yes. It hasn't come back? You sworn to secrecy. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we're not talking about it now? We're not, talking about a different thing? Look, sworn to secrecy, not even you, the player of the game, can know right. what took place. Okay, cool. You, you are... Your character, very good at keeping secrets. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I forgot. I'm, like, in on this choice. I, wait, hang on, hang on. No, this is good. This is a normal way for people to act. 
<laughs> so apparently, there is also an Azkaban escapee going after you, and this is probably the mystery assassin that wants okay. to kill you. Mm -hmm. So later, you go and meet with your friend Ben in the Forbidden Forest, and he wants to prove to you that he is this new brave Ben. So what, what's he going to do to prove that? He wants to fight the Acromantula. He willingly wants to go into the Forbidden Forest, you know, the one that's forbidden, and fight the giant, evil, talking spider that enjoys eating humans. Okay. <laughs> Flip like that we're, switch. We're... Ben's in sicko mode. Ben's in <laughs> goblin mode. He's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we should, we should give Ben a hug and a nap. <laughs> like... Like, I think, I, I'm not even sure that this is not Look, fear anymore. Men, I feel like men will just... literally go into the Forbidden Forest to fight an Acromantula instead of going to therapy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, what, is he, what happens after this? So, he, he wants to do this. I don't think he actually does. I think you talk him out of it. But he also says, hey, have you met my friend Cedric, who you have met? But you get to hang out with Cedric some more. Can, can we do another round of applause? Yeah, another round of applause for Cedric Diggory. Shout out to Robert Pattinson. Yeah. So you spend some time with Cedric and you help Madame Pomfrey as well, tending to some patients, okay? So later on, you then are brewing up some pepper up potion for Madame Pomfrey. What is cool, and I will say, and I say this every time I do one of these live shows, is that Madame Pomfrey in this game is the coolest character. And if anything good came from this game is that they fleshed out Madame Pomfrey, who just was like the ultimate, I'm getting too old for this shit, character in the books and they expand that in the game and it's really nice i appreciate and i love that for her yeah i'm uh, that sounds nice the, another reason i'm gonna get the game yeah so, so you help madame pomfrey you're making this pepper potion while you're brewing it professor snape asks you to follow him back to the hospital wing and once you get there you find that madame pomfrey has been petrified by the cursed vault curse situation so Dumbledore then decides to make an announcement. He tells everyone about what happened to Madame Pomfrey, and he forbids any student from leaving the castle since there's an assassin on the loose. True to Hogwarts form, <laughs> not send the kids home, just don't leave. <laughs> the kids are only being petrified in the castle, right? Yeah. Okay. No, so there's, there's, there's the internal danger of if you're inside, you'll get petrified. If you're outside, you might get murdered. So it's really, uh, you know, pick your poison here. <laughs> yeah, I could go home. I would go home. I yeah. would leave. <laughs> I would go home so quickly. So, let's see. It doesn't matter that my mom's a muggle. She's coming to get me. Like, <laughs> like it's not going to stop her. Okay, so you end up going against Dumbledore's wishes, and you and your friend Beatrice sneak out to search around the lake for the final vault, because maybe it's by the lake. But instead, you end up finding the missing Azkaban escapee, who starts to attack you, but a mysterious person breaks up the fight, and you are able to escape with just minor injuries. Now, your friend Kiara helps heal your wounds, and later on, you find out that Dumbledore already knows that you snuck out to the lake because cool. yeah. he's a powerful wizard, yeah. and he's the headmaster, or Hogwarts has CCTV? Mm -hmm. Who's to say? And, of course, you get put in detention, so... Both you and Beatrice are in detention, but then later on, you go to the kitchens, and then you meet with your friend Talbot in the Owlery. I don't know how this is important, mm -hmm. but maybe you just like got a quick snack mm -hmm. and hung out with some house elves, and then you went to the Owlery, but you're in the Owlery, and you meet up with Talbot, you search around to try to find some more clues about what's going on with Rakepick and all this stuff, and you find a note with a message written on it in Japanese. Sick. Mm-hmm. So cool. what do you do? You go to the library to find a book where you can translate Japanese. All right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the Logical solution. Whatever, I guess. We, we don't know anybody, I assume. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, no, nope. I'm yeah. glad that you didn't go to your Korean friend, Jay Kim, and go, it's hey, really Jay. <laughs> so that's like, thank God. <laughs> Dodge the bullet. On yeah, line. really, really could have could have been dodgy there. So you are able to translate this message, and you learn that there are white quills hidden at the lakeshore. So you go back to the lakeshore, you know, the one that got you in trouble, and Talbot wants to come along with you. So you go there, you check out the quills, you are able to learn that Jacob is the one who saved you from the mysterious wizard 
Azkaban escapee who attacked okay. you. Yeah. And you also learn that the Ministry is looking for this Azkaban escapee. So what have they done? They've sent Dementors to search for him. Classic. Classic Ministry. Now, while you go into Jacob's room to search for some more clues, you find one. You untransfigure a black quill that reveals a message from R asking Jacob to meet R uh -oh. at the Forest Grove. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm so, feeling very validated. <laughs> so you decide that you are going to try and like sneak on this meeting to see if you can figure out what's going on. So Marula, Ben, and you do some final preparations for heading into the Forbidden Forest, and you learn Flipendo Maxima. Hell yeah. Now here's what's cool. I don't know if you're keyed in on Flipendo here, but Flipendo is a, is a spell that yeah. never existed in the Harry Potter books. It never existed in the Harry Potter movies, but it's been in literally every Harry Potter video game <laughs> across every platform. Okay. It's in the PlayStation game. It's in the computer games. It's in the Game Boy games. It's in this game. I don't know why Flipendo has just been decided as like, yup, we gotta have it, but it's in every game. So what have they, do so what have they done here? They've taken Flipendo and done Flipendo Maxima, which is also a thing that doesn't exist in the books, but in the movies they were like, what if it was a spell, but like big? So they found the Latin word for big, and then boom, Flipendo Maxima. So you've Do you done know that the movie. You took was it Latin in high school? Yeah, I took Latin in high school. Um, so. I did too. That's how I knew. Yeah, I, I did as well. That's how I knew. That <laughs> did, you, did you also take a line in high school? Oh, and middle school. And I don't remember any of it. Oh, I remember just enough to get by in podcasts to do they, some fun they facts. They really misled me when they were like, come take Latin. Like, you'll, you'll learn a bunch of cool history. And mm -hmm. you'll, like, learn about some warriors that fought stuff. And I, like, uh, could speak at language right now. And I don't. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, Achilles has a spear. I'm, I'm, there was a, a period in my life when taking Latin in high school like really didn't pay off at all. Because like, yeah, it helped me with the English on the SATs, but then nothing. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I got to make a recurring joke on my podcast yeah. that now it has come back around and has yeah. become useful. Like, yeah, if I was able to speak Spanish or French, that would be pretty cool and very useful and fun and cultural and blah, blah, blah. But I can make a joke on my podcast every now and then. <laughs> What do you think the like ratio of kids in your Latin class to kids who've successfully used Latin? Like, do you think it's just you? It would be me versus however many kids were in my Latin class. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I think it's just it's I, I'm the one who made it and found a way. So, you learn Flipendo Maxima and you go into the forest and you quickly get surrounded by a bunch of Dementors, but there's so many of them. Wait, does Flipendo Maxima, you do sick flips, or what do you do? It is, so, <laughs> Flipendo is just kind of, it's the knockback jinx, so it kind of just makes oh, someone okay. fall over. All right. So I guess it's like the cat to a anything on a countertop spell. Not sick at all. <laughs> <laughs> so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just the big version. So, you get surrounded by a bunch of Dementors. All of your attempts to repel them are in vain. You get saved, surprisingly, by Madame Rakepick, but the reason why she saved you from the Dementors is because she wanted to finish, her, finish you off herself. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a big fight. None of you are powerful enough to defeat her. Ben tries his best to protect you, but he can't stop her as well. Oh, no. And just as she is about to cast the killing curse on him, Rowan, your best friend, appears and pushes him out of the way, and Rowan gets killed instead. Yes! I know! Your best friend in the game gets murdered. And not even in year seven. In year six? A year earlier than you would think? You picked the right thing to be upset about. It's... <laughs> it's, 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 it's for sure. But you yeah. zeroed in on the issue here. <laughs> so what's funny about this is that I knew this was going to happen because Kelly, when she plays this iPhone game, it's usually before she's going to bed. It's kind of like her mindless, silly, like, let me just wind down and, you know, tap on my phone a little bit and then go to bed activity. And I usually stay up a little later than Kelly, furiously editing my podcasts. From the other room, like I was in the living room, she's in the bedroom, I just hear a muffled, because we have very thick walls, I hear a very muffled, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Or maybe she's, maybe Kelly said, what the heck, but it was at least in that cadence. And I run in and be like, are you okay? And she goes, they killed Rowan. <laughs> I was like, what? And I think I asked, is it year seven? And she goes, no, it's year six. <laughs> Which of course was my first question. He's consistent, folks. <laughs> he believes what he believes, well, no matter what. <laughs> I mean, I... To be fair, I was surprised that they didn't kill off Ron in the book. Like it se- w- felt like we were going before that way. they started killing yeah. off all of the like close but not the best friends. I thought Ron was a high candidate, but yeah. then they just were like, "What if? What if we said it was kind of like trying to like kill four quarters to equal a dollar?" They're like, yeah. "What if we kill four people we like care a lot about, but not like not as important to Harry as Ron?" Like, ah, we'll Someone just kill. Was really hurt by that. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, "No, oh man, I love Tonks," um, but you know, she, she wasn't in the books that much. But uh, Tonks is great. They shouldn't have murdered her. It was very sad. It was the not whole un- completely uncalled like, for. I, I hate Tonks. He was like, don't say anything. And this is like a big violation of trust that I'm doing right now. It's like, this dude hates Tonks. But, I mean, the, the iPhone game had, had the guts to do what JK couldn't. It's like, kill off your best <laughs> friend. It's wild. And uh, that's where we're going to end what the heck is going on in the plot of Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery Woo. for this live show. We'll have to see in the future. But yeah, that's what's going on. Your best friend is dead. Yay! <laughs> so at this point in time, we're going to continue and do some Q&A. Please send in some questions to podcast at gmail.com because uh, looking at the questions we got, not enough. So send some in. <laughs> um, but as I always do, I'm going to begin with a, <laughs> an email that was sent at exactly the right time from someone named Kelly Schubert. Uh, the subject <laughs> line is, it's me, dot, 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 your wife. <laughs> Kelly says, hi, Meek, miss you. I had a hard time coming up with a question, but I landed on one. Hermione versus Annabeth from Percy Jackson, if you haven't read. Ooh. She says, the fight is on who would win, but then an asterisk. And she goes, though we both know they're too smart to fight and would choose to band together. <laughs> I feel like if they had to fight, it would be easy for Annabeth, since her go-to move is take my bronze knife and put it to someone's throat. Whereas Not enough mi- of that in the wizarding world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just using weapons. Yeah. It, it could have been helpful. For sure. Hermione, not the best. She did punch Draco in the face that one time, which was very cool, Mm. but she also, in the first book, forgot that she could light things on fire with her magic wand, so don't know that she's the best at fighting? I feel like Annabeth would take it in a fight here. I want to, I want to just, like, I want Kelly to know that I also know that they would talk it out, Uh 100%. Um, I don't I don't feel that I'm Percy Jackson qualified enough to... I'm picking Hermione. Okay, yeah, that's all good. Um, She's cool. She is cool. She's cool and she becomes a lot more... She becomes more confident and competent and she's like very quick on her feet later on in the series. We don't necessarily see her in a lot of dual situations, but she could... It's like a last resort for her where Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not for... The, for the boys, and it probably should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like so, she's trying to do, like, it's like the D&D person who tries to, like, talk their way out of a fight before committing to fighting, you know? I think even in the fight, we'd be using a lot of silly spells. Like, we, <laughs> we would not be, like, we would not be gloves off from Hermione. <laughs> no. But I'm still picking her. Okay, all right, I like it. So this next question comes from Dakota, who has two questions. First, what Harry Potter creature would you and Kelly adopt as a pet... And what would you name it? So, first off, yeah. and you can also answer this question as well. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what pet would you adopt? I feel like I wouldn't want a dangerous pet. I feel like, I know a Krupp is the cute, like, three-tailed dog, which I think is very adorable. But at the same time, I don't want a dog. Can, it, I mean, it does count as Wizarding World. Can I just get a cat? Like, is that okay? Can I do that? Because, like, famously, I'm not a big pet guy. So if I could get, like, a low-maintenance, like, you're going to be okay on your own. Yeah. We would get a cat. And Kelly, have sa- Kelly and I have said if we ever do get a cat, we would name it Pomplamoose, our favorite French word, which is the French word for grapefruit, the worst fruit. It's the best word for the worst fruit. Um, and we would call the cat Moose for short. So I think just a cat named Moose is what I would go for. Uh, I'd adopt Ron Weasley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you name Ron Weasley? <laughs> 
Um, I would spell Ron like my last name. Oh, no, R-A-U-N. R-A-U-N. Ron That's very Wesley. cute. Yeah. I like that. That's very cute. Okay, so then there is a part two to this question, which is not about Harry Potter. It's very fun. Who is your Who was your OG son's favorite player yeah. from when Steve Nash played with Amare and Shaq? Okay. It's very interesting that you would ask this, Dakota, because in the mid-2000s, I really was into the Phoenix Suns. I thought they had really cool uniforms. They had the purple and the gray and the orange and gray. I really liked it. They had the cool, like, basketball on fire Sun logo. I really liked Steve Nash as a player. The Knicks were very bad at this point in time, so I wanted to root for other teams while they were doing poorly. Stuff has changed since then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, the they're are just so, so good, good now. now. Um, but I really enjoyed that team. I would say it's tough because there's a lot of good characters. Like Steve Nash certainly was my favorite player at that time. Just the long hair that was always wet and like kind of a little blue. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed Steve Nash a lot. But I also, I would say like now my answer might be Boris Diaw because I've learned a lot Ooh. of fun things about Boris yes. Diaw now. Like he would bring a full espresso machine to all of the games because he really was particular about his coffee and didn't trust other places to make the coffee. Yes, this man is French. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going with Goran Dragic. Goran Dragic. Yeah. That's very fun. Eventual uh, Houston you. Rockets thank player. You. I, I became obsessed with basketball in the year 2011 because it was lockout season and that was the first year I had a TV in my room. Mm -hmm. So sort of combined to me not paying attention to school, watching basketball. And Goran Dragic was, we had just gotten him from the Suns. And so I was like, and still am, like really in on every player who was on that team. So yeah, Dragic. That's awesome. And had a great, famously great playoff game against the Spurs. Yes. One of the mortal enemies. Uh -huh. yeah. And he also famously got absolutely sent to the shadow realm by Derrick Rose dunking on him. Quite bad. If you want to see, that's a different. If you, want to, if you want to see someone get murdered on television, <laughs> just YouTube Derek Rose Goran Dragic. It's terrifying. <laughs> Derek Rose hits his head on the oh, backboard. No. That's how high he jumped. That's like nine feet in the air. He wasn't a. He wasn't like a defensive mastermind. No, and I think he was, was like a rookie really, at the time. That was which, not really the thing. I, I, he might have been a rookie, which is like imagine like hello, welcome to your first year on the job. One of the greatest players has just ethered you. So here's an email from Kelsey, makes the subject line sons and four. So, oh yes, thank you Kelsey for reminding me to make this joke. <laughs> Kelsey opens it with, so glad you're back in the wilds of Arizona, <laughs> which is a line from the first Fantastic Beasts movie where oh. they need to return the bird to the wilds of Arizona. <laughs> which like, yes, a lot of great nature in Arizona. I would not call it the wilds. Are they still I, making those? I'm sorry? Fantastic Beast movie, they're still making that? Yeah, they made a third one. And to all the people asking me if I'm going to make an episode about it, no, because one, the podcast doesn't make episodes anymore. I just post live show audio. But two, I'm not going to fucking watch that movie. <laughs> like, beyond the reason of I do not want to give any money directly or indirectly to J.K. Rowling, I don't want to waste three hours of my life. You know what I could do with those three hours? Literally anything else. <laughs> anything would be better. Yeah. Uh, so, it's the. How could it be worse than the last movie? That's impressive. <laughs> I'm definitely not watching it. So yeah, they are still making them. They're not doing well, which is great. I think they're gonna like completely stop the franchise, which makes me really happy. And it's so funny with the Fantastic Beast movies that like when they first came out. I had very recently started Potterless, and I remember there was some discourse, people being confused, that like, if you're gonna make a prequel series or any sort of like extended universe thing, why are you doing it about the guy who like just goes around finding creatures and writes a textbook? And people were kind of making fun of this as a concept for the spinoff series, and now, after the second one and all of the terrible Would've things that better. everyone involved Would've in the production, everyone's like, could you please just make a movie where <laughs> Eddie Redmayne and I forget the guy who plays Jacob Kowalski's name, but he's really nice. Uh, what's that guy? What's that actor's name? Dan Fogler. Thank you. I met him for like five seconds in the green room of LeakyCon once because he did Ooh. like twelve panels in one day, Ooh. and he was very nice in those twelve seconds. Anyway, somebody's a niche shout internet micro celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop as bragging or doing anything close to it. Again, I was just trying to say he's nice, not flex. Yeah, yeah he's nice. He's nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> we like but we like him in this. It's sense. just it's so funny that now we're just like, can we please just have a movie where they go to different countries and find beasts? Like we're begging for the thing that we were clowning on them four yeah. years ago. But honestly, that would Matt, if they just made a lighthearted, silly like it's Indiana Jones, but kind of fun and stuff and more lighthearted, and then they find beasts and they go to different continents. Like, God, that would have been so good. <laughs> Gosh, it would have been so good. Gosh. Anyway, Kelsey asked a question. Kelsey says, I'm Kelsey Ravenclaw here with my husband, Ben, not the scared guy from the game. Nice. <laughs> Who is also a Ravenclaw. My question, are those lemons or parsnips on your shirt? They are oh. lemons. Thank you for asking. They are lemons. Uh, I also, you can't tell because this, uh, the, the, the table here is blocking it, but I am wearing yellow socks to match the, the, the yellow lemons. Put a lot of thought into the outfit, as I always do. I was going to wear like a purple shirt and orange pants, but then the sun's lost and I was like, ah, too soon. <laughs> so um, I got it at bonobos.com. It's where I get a lot of my funky shirts. They do them like, they don't like redo a lot of shirts. So I don't think they like make this one anymore. But if you want funky shirts, you can go to bonobos. They're not sponsoring me. I've emailed them so many times, <laughs> so many times about trying to get sponsored. It hasn't happened, but maybe one day. Uh, ben has a question. What, in your opinions, would, wizards, would wizard drugs look like, and what would they do? All right. You, just you know us. Right you know today. us, big drug guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I feel like uh, wizard drugs, I mean, for the most part, like wizard alcohol isn't that much different from... Okay. Regular alcohol, so I feel like wizard drugs wouldn't be that much different from regular drugs. So I feel like I feel like if you are gonna get magic into the mix, like maybe it is just what all of the like edibles containers and boxes like promise you are gonna happen, but really mm. it's always just a roll of the dice of either if you're gonna be like, I'm gonna laugh at everything, or I'm gonna like question the concept of time. <laughs> so I feel like they would just have like hyper specific sort of like you know, kind of like friend George do weird stuff with yeah. candy. So maybe it's just like hyper specific edibles where it's like, you have this and you're going to laugh at stuff. Uh -huh. You have this one and music is going to sound really good. Yeah. You have this one and you're going to like notice how bad CGI is in like old movies. I'm just describing all the things that happen I, to me when I'm I, on edibles. I would like a drug where you don't notice how bad CGI is. That would be like so much stuff would become more fun <laughs> if I was just like, watching episodes of Star Trek, like, I'm really there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that could be one of the, yeah. maybe that's one of the things, it's like, it's a suspensive disbelief wizard edible. It's like, yeah. you go and it's just like, whoa, it's so believable. <laughs> I think this is a shockingly good take. <laughs> what, what wizard drugs are Let's do it. Take? Let's write the book. Okay. We'll make a new fan fiction. Okay. So here is uh, another question. This is from Erica. Erica says, playing this game as a non-racist Slytherin. Thank you for clarifying. If anyone's ever been to a Potterless Live show, usually we have a microphone passing it around and stuff, and people say their name and what house they are, and if they're a Slytherin, they have to say whether or not they're racist, and if they're racist, I don't field your question because i got to draw the line somewhere. But Erica says, my biggest rant with this game is that if you decide to be a Slytherin, Marula and the goons are still Slytherin, so you just hate these people and then sleep in the same dorm and you lose house cup points together. <laughs> I like that this is not a question. It's just, I'm angry and I need to tell someone about this. Until you, until you were saying that you lose house points to them, I was sort of like, yeah, have you ever been to college? <laughs> like, like, I didn't hate people who lived in different dorms, really. <laughs> Yeah, I did, I did you ever, I never had a situation, I had some weird roommates just my freshman year before you got to yeah. pick who your roommates were. Yeah. Did you ever have a bad, I never had a bad situation, I just had like some weird guys. No, I, my first year roommate was like with my, one of my best friends in the world from high school and we hated each other the whole year. Oh no! And it was just a sort of a thing where you both just like, there was an implicit understanding the second we move out, we're going to be best friends again. Yeah. <laughs> it was just sort of like, we, us, this is not it. This, yeah. Us sleeping in the same room, this is not okay, yeah. this is not it. Sometimes <laughs> you just around. can't, sometimes you just can't live with some folks. And that happened with me and my buddy. Yeah. Did you know Joseph Song? He was my year at, at, nah. at Rice. But like, we were in, we weren't roommates, we were suite mates. So we, uh -huh. we shared a suite, but not a, a bedroom. And we like were friends like early on, like, you know, and everything was cool. And then like a couple months in, like then roommate dislike came in because it yeah. was just like leaving stuff in places or whatever. Yeah. And then same thing, like we had like a little tough time towards the end of freshman year. And then once we were living together, very close friends again. So cool. sometimes it just happens. Yeah. So uh, yes, valid, valid that the Slytherin people are still mean to you 
not cool. Totally get what it. What house Valid would you put them in? Like, if you're, if you're going to be a Slytherin in the game, what, what house are then the bullies in? They would have to be, like, I see why the game couldn't do this, but, like, you would have to just put them in Gryffindor. Like, because yeah. Gryffindor and Slytherin really don't like each other. Hufflepuff's too nice. And then Ravenclaw's, like, just, like, can't be bothered with <laughs> to stoop to their own level. It's I like, like I have important like, things to study. Like a Ravenclaw bully or a Hufflepuff bully who's, like, accidentally mean all the yeah. time. Yeah. Like, they don't know that they're doing it. Uh-huh. And they're just sort of like you hate them and they and they like they love you. Yeah. You it know? would be fun to have a Ravenclaw bully who was just like flip the script on a bully and they're just like really smart and mm-hmm. they just like you know get on you for not knowing all the cool facts about wizardry that they know. I think that could be fun. But then they'd have to like write a whole nother thing. Ooh. All right. This question comes from uh Masha. Am I saying that right? Okay, cool. Um, Masha says the Suns would have won <laughs> in the thing. I also like that that wasn't prefaced with anything, like if Chris Paul was healthy or whatever, but like they, sh- they would have. Sh- oh, should have? Yeah, they should have. They should have. Would have? Who's to say? <laughs> the question. On TNO, you recently said that you don't like pets. Can you further expand on this hot take? <laughs> Look, it's not that I dislike pets. I just didn't grow up with them, and I just feel like there is so much effort to be put into having a pet, at that point, why not just have a kid? That's where I'm at. Where like, if you're gonna have a thing that like makes it harder for you to travel and costs a lot of money and you have to get shots all the time and they like go to the doctor and stuff, like why not get, why not just go for the thing that can grow up? I also know like this is a, you know, I'm, I'm very much hyperbolizing this and like, it's, you can't just like be like, oh yeah, sure, let me just have a kid. Um, But that is my thought of like, I, I just, I saw how much work and stuff pets were, and I, as someone that had no, like, connection in growing up with them, just all like, why would someone do this to themselves kind of thing. I, I have a, a classic black witch's cat, mm-hmm. and uh, she is um, my favorite person in the world. And <laughs> but, okay, this is, this is the setup I've got. I've got a self-cleaning litter box. Okay. I have, like, a, a tray of litter that some company ships me every month. And mm-hmm. I just pull the old one out, and I put the new one in. That's nice. And then I have a self-food dispensing thing. And then she just drinks my water. So, like, I don't really have to put out wa- water for her. Because if I leave a water glass unattended at all, like, she, she's in there. Like, it's pretty good. Mm. I'm not, I wouldn't go as far to say I'm not anti-pet. Her I'm not Instagram like trying to tell people they're not <laughs> No, plug it, plug it, plug it. Oh, it's Bastet the Cryptid. Very good. Bastet, good. Egyptian god, the cryptid. There you go. Um, yeah. Cryptids. There you go. Let it just be clear. I'm not anti-pet. They're just not for me. You know, I'm not going to yuck anyone's pet young. They're just not for me. I also care too much about my shoes where if I came home and a pet was like clawing them up or peeing on them, I would be devastated. Mm. I feel like I was really respectful about your bad pet take because I wanted to talk about that stuff. <laughs> and I should have I should have ducked on you a little bit harder. Look, but it, I know it's a hot take. These people know this about you. I know this about you. We don't need to Women discuss it. So this one comes from all right. Uh, is it Liney? L Y N E A? Am I Linnea? How do I say? It? Nailed it the second time. There we go. So Linnea asks if the final battle between Harry and Voldemort was a smack talk battle, which like it kind of was. <laughs> what? What would, the, what would be those zingers? I mean, definitely Harry had a lot of zingers in there because he called him Tom, great. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, you know, Dump, Voldemort was like, do you dare? He said, yes, I dare. Uh, I don't know, like cool zingers to throw. I mean, I feel like you could just make fun of his lack of style, his lack of shoes, his lack of nose. Like there's lots of, lots of stuff you can wear. Yeah, his gross toenails. Just, just to uh, put myself in Voldemort's not shoes for a second, mm-hmm. I think, like, I think if I were going to be mad at Harry Potter, I'd be like, okay, can you point out the actions that you did? Like, what did you do that brought you here? And yeah, he's going to be like, oh, well, Hermione did this, and I'd be like, no, 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 <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> That brought you here. What did you, Harry, what did you do? Yeah, because, like, you didn't defeat me. Your mom did a cool thing. It gave you the magic spell to defeat me. Like, yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of other people propping him up. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be able to. I mean, I'm sure some people here come up with something. But I just feel like he'd be I, sort of put on. Because I think he thinks of it all as, like, well, of course, I brought myself to this place. Yeah, I think that's good. Because I feel like Harry does have a good amount of zingers in there. But Voldemort doesn't have a lot. I feel like Voldemort just calling out the fact that Harry didn't really do a whole lot on his own. Yeah. It would be good. It'd be the perfect thing to sweep out the rug from under him. 
the other question to follow up was how would you stage it? And I would stage it exactly as it was in the book where Harry, <laughs> where they're just like walking in a circle, like they're Simba and Scar. <laughs> like it was already perfect. And the fact that they didn't include that in the movies, a felony. Like <laughs> David Yates should be in prison. Ooh, ooh, okay. Uh, Marissa asks, Hagrid versus Tyson. They are both gentle giants, but really sometimes the author makes them seem less intelligent than others. This is a good question. I'm going to give the edge to Tyson here because, like, Tyson is so pure and always doing his best, and Hagrid just, like, his trademark is saying things he shouldn't have said. <laughs> I feel like Tyson's got a little bit of an edge there. Um... Second question, how do you find guests for live shows versus regular shows? This is, a this is great. <laughs> live shows, you, the order of operations. Hey, Kelly, do you want to do it? <laughs> hey, Johnny, do you want to do it? This feels great. And then... How, <laughs> how, long, how long do you guys think this list is going to be? I think it's going to be like 10, 15 people. The, the, next, the next is, do I have a friend that lives nearby? That would be fun to do this on stage with. And that is where Grant fell into. Uh, but yeah, Grant, woo! I live in LA. I don't live in Phoenix. I'm, I'm so sorry if you thought yeah. I lived in Phoenix. I do not. Grant lives in Los Angeles, which was close enough. And I knew the flights would be cheap. So I was like, hey, Grant, I'll cover your flight. You want to come and make fun of an iPhone game in Phoenix yeah. with me on a Wednesday night? And Grant said yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the truth is, though, that I was your original podcast co-host. Yes. Oh, good. Great. This? We've naturally found the segue, and this will be where we'll close the night on. Okay. Perfect. Um, very quickly, though, Marissa's son wants to know, can he copy your haircut? And if he does, uh, can he ask for the shoes? Sure. They won't know what you're saying, though, so maybe show them a photo of me. Um, is but there, yeah, wait, totally copy. Is there somebody who cuts hair here who knows what the shoes is? Because we could solve this problem. We could, lock, we could lock it I don't out. think it's a thing. Okay. okay. And, but as far as regular shows, it's just finding like other podcasters because other podcasters are good at podcasting and have microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, usually that's the key there. Okay. So let's, let's talk about our podcast history to close out the show because this is great. I feel we have like to take it back it. to us doing the mystery plays, which was right. a student run play. What was your role? You were the I was assistant like, director? I was like, no, no, no. I was in it, but barely. I would, okay. like had a half foot in it. And, okay. and Susanna would be like, hey, you, you don't have to like sway nervously in scenes. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> okay, Susanna. <laughs> so we, I was also barely in this play. It was like one of my first forays into doing like plays at Rice. And we somehow we would do these like different warm-ups before getting on and doing dress rehearsals the show etc we in the like green roomy area there was like this library of like scattered random books and there was this one really chunky book called cat magic and it was this really long weird as hell sci-fi book and yeah. what we would do is i would take the book wait and the first chapter was ripped out Yes. So there's no, there's no way to know what happened. <laughs> no, no way to know. I would take the book. I would find a random passage. And then either I or usually our friend Carter, who like was like the, the lead year. in the play, very good acting, teacher of the year. He would, in this like very deep voice, like dramatically read a passage from Cat Magic. Uh, and then that would be like our hype up before we took the stage. <laughs> and then we would end it after he read, you know, a paragraph of stuff that we were, had no idea what was going on. In unison, we would all go, Cat Magic. <laughs> and then that was our warm up. So after college, I did, we, we were trying to figure this out, chicken or the egg, who came up. I feel like I had the idea for it because yeah. I was getting into doing podcast stuff. I'd like, do, I was doing the Vine podcast. I had done my little basketball thing with my fantasy yeah. basketball league. And I feel like I had come up with the idea and then you ran with it more to come up with a structure for it. We recorded one episode, which has been lost at least to the annals of time on my end because it was in a Gmail and, right. and then it like got deleted and it's like not on G Drive anymore. But let, let me, let, tell me if this sounds familiar to you guys. The, the, <laughs> the concept of this podcast is we'd read a chapter of this book and then we'd make fun of it. Mm -hmm. Have you guys heard of a podcast like that? <laughs> the other thing we try to do is predict what happens next, not knowing what would yeah, happen. Yeah, preview the next episode but, yeah. was so pretty like, good. It was very much the precursor to Potterless. And we had like recorded an episode, I'm sure very poorly. Like, yeah, the bad. audio quality could not have been good. And I remember like we did one and like you were more into it before you recorded and then I recorded and I was more into it and then like you had kind of dropped the ball yeah, and we flaked. didn't pursue it I any further. I 100% flaked on it. It was, like, <laughs> it was like not good and I didn't know how to say like, hey, we need to take another shot at this. <laughs> and so I just said, um, classic move here. I said nothing about it. 
Uh, and then we brought it up like two years later as a joke. If she was a successful podcaster, and as you might know, I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> now the mistake was that in the planning, you were going to be the host, and I was going to be like yeah. the color commentary guy. So I guess we we f- maybe we figured out why it didn't sound good, and it yeah. sounds like it was your fault. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I 100 percent agree. But. This is the original podcast lineup right right, right here. We've done it. So we've come full circle. I feel like at some point in time, like now that I am like professional podcast boy, like we could find a way, whether it's like a thing or like a limited series, like it's not impossible to do it. It's just that book is so fucking long. Yeah. It's like 500 pages. And we did read the first couple of chapters. It's wild. Yeah. What we did learn is that what happens is like there's this big, giant, evil, like ethereal cat and it starts possessing people in the town and there stuff. There was a frog. The way that... What? Yeah, there was a frog involved, right? No, there no, no. Was, well, there was, so there was... Here, <laughs> we are, they're going to kick us off the stage. We're way but too excited. What Sorry. happened was someone was driving into town to do like some experimental research on a frog, yes. and their car drove over a road where like a tendril of the ethereal cat was laying yes. across the road, and it dragged it like from the sky over into the town, yeah. and then it possessed like a frog that they were dissecting in a lab, like doing experimental electrotherapy stuff on, yeah. and then it started like that's how the plague started and it started possessing people in the yeah. town. It's wild. At some day, we will do it. It sounds sick as hell. We're going to do it at some point. Cat magic will happen. The magical pod cat will happen. It warms (laughs) my heart. I'm ready. Okay, now you're ready. Now that I'm a famous podcaster, I'm good enough for you. (laughs) Yeah, could you do all the heavy lifting? (laughs) We'll make it happen. And then I will uh, probably show up to record. (laughs) Oh, but this is great. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. First off, let's give a round of applause for Grant for coming on, flying down, doing the show. Give a round of applause for all of you for coming out. That's super cool. And for all of the folks who have helped us run it, all the folks here at CB Live from sound to hospitality and everything have been super cool. So thank you guys all so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Still merch in the back if you want to get merch. Did anyone come from like far away to see the show? Like, did someone travel? Where, where'd you come from? Bob, what the Whoa. fuck? That is super far. Okay, because you've traveled from very far, you can have this I took Latin high school notebook as a you're the person from the farthest distance gift. I will leave it here at the table, and uh, you can come get it. But yeah, uh, normally love to do mean green stuff, but uh, it's the world right now, so going to try to be a little safe. So uh, just going to like scoot on backstage. But I really appreciate all you all so much for coming out. This has been wonderful and lovely. And as they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, after they accidentally bring in an ethereal cat into town to possess a dissected frog, Wizard of! Thanks so much for coming out, everybody! Also, if you took any pictures and shit, tag me on Instagram and Twitter. I want to reshare it! Fastet the Cryptid. Yeah!